Okay, so we've had another update to OpenFide, so let's go to their website uh, with Chromium. I'm using Armbian for this, which is a great operating system for Orange Pi 5. Uh, so if we go to OpenFide, which is basically an open source version of what you get on a Chromebook. So you get Linux, you get Android apps, and you get a full desktop browser. Really, really nice combination, works really, really well. Uh, this also has Widevine support as well, so good streaming capabilities. So if we do Control F and just start typing Orange, we can find the Orange Pi 5 version. And this is one of the most recent versions, so you can see here R114-R1. Uh, the Raspberry Pi version doesn't get as many updates, unfortunately. Obviously, when we get a Raspberry Pi 5, I'm sure it will be the one at the top of the list. But for the moment, Orange Pi 5 definitely gets really good support on this operating system. So let's click on that R114R1. And you can see it's for the Orange Pi 5, 5B, and 5 Plus. But the instructions are a little bit different. Uh, I did some instructions on how to update this version uh, before, but this is... You need to tell it basically what type of disk you're running it from. So whether that's a SATA drive, an NVMe drive, an EMMC drive. Uh, I think all of them run from an SD card. All images generated from the .run file will support booting for from a TF micro SD card. But you just need to tell it if you're using something else. I'm going to be using NVMe. So let's scroll down and find the version which is here, so let's download that. I'm not entirely sure why, probably the easiest to run OS is one of the most difficult to install. Uh, so let's go to Downloads, and we just need to copy the name of it. So we can see here, Orange Pie OpenFide. If I right click on that and do Green Name, I can then copy this, in fact, all of this, now we want to open a terminal, control alt t type cd and dir, and then cd downloads, and then right click, and we'll paste in that text we had before, but we need to put something at the start, and that something is chmod. Uh, so hit enter. Then we have a choice uh, with what we're booting from, but I'm gonna try this one, uh, which supposedly gives you the option to choose what you wanna write. And paste. Uh, here we go, supported boards, Orange Pi 5, Pi 5B, Pi 5 Plus, or quit. So I'm on a plus, so I'm gonna press three. And I'm gonna put it in an NVMe drive, so I'm gonna press one. And this should create the file now. And we get no indication of what's going on. So let's have a look in the folder and see if it's been created already. So downloads. No, it's not there yet. So we just got to wait for that to happen. Okay, and it just happened. So you can see now we have an image file. So now we can use Raspberry Pi Imager or Belena Etcher or something else that you write images with for Linux. Choose OS, use custom, pick the image we've just created, and hit open. Plug in my little Orico NVMe Caddy, definitely recommend these, it's much easier for writing an OS too than using the bootloader methods. So pop that in, choose storage, pick the NVMe drive you just plugged in, and hit write, and yes and come back when that's all done. Remove the drive that's already in here, like so, and then replace that with this little one and pop it back in the case. Not sure why I didn't write this for the Orange Pi 5 as I haven't got it in the case, it would be a lot easier. Plug it all back in and boot up again. And that's booting into OpenFide. So I've already shown how to install Linux in this video, and I've also shown how to install Android apps in this video, so I won't go through that again. 
I'll just log in as normal. So welcome to Open5 version 17. Keep your OS and run Open5 from USB is fine because obviously it's already on the drive and it's an NVMe drive. Okay, I think I'll go for some different wallpaper. So let's have a look and see what's on offer. All sorts of things in this. Let's just go for a landscape one. That's pretty cool. And so let's just check the browser has got all the acceleration it should have. Uh, you can see uh, it picks up on my account and it starts to basically populate the same as I've used on another Chrome device. I use Fido S on a FideTab Duo tablet at my work and I really like it as an operating system. It works really well for me. Uh, right, so let's have a look at GPU support. And we can see Vulkan is disabled but everything else is looking pretty good. Let's just quickly see if uh, the Android is working fine. So we're going to Aptide. And here we can download an app store. And let's save that. And show in folder. And let's double click it. Yeah, and it just lets you install it straight away. Look, no trouble at all. App installed, open, and there's an Android app. As you can see, it's windowed, or we can go full screen. As I say, I've got more details on Android apps on one of my other Fido S videos. So let's close that down, just show how well the browser works. So Hot UK Deals, let's go with YouTube, let's go with Trolley, and let's go with Flipboard. And you can see that we can flick back through and it's nice and fast, scrolling up and down. Uh, so YouTube, let's go 4K HDR. And oh, the mouse scroll is the opposite way around to what I use. So I'm always going in the wrong direction. I always reverse it. A switch video I was in one of their videos uh, I won a competition but I don't think I'm in the latest one I'm pretty sure I'm not right so let's go full screen and let's go with it's on 10 oh, it's only going up to 1080 uh, let's do stats for nerds but I don't think it's gonna have any trouble it's usually brilliant in this yeah nothing dropping at all looking really really nice and let's switch through a couple of the other websites that are there and you can see that it's working absolutely fine and if we click on it full screen it is just a really lightweight os and works really well on these rock chip processors actually works really well on a raspberry pi 4 as well uh, it's one of the best operating systems to run on that i would say if you only need light use, if you don't need, uh, you know, a lot of the intricacies of Linux, although as I say, Linux works on this, it's not as good as having it on a native machine, but you can install apps and programs and, you know, things like uh, LibreOffice, Handbrake, all sorts of things can be installed on it. So let's have a look back at, there was a thing about Widevine. Uh, so if we go open file again, and scroll down so orange pie let's click on this and there was something you had to do had to enable widevine as i mentioned before this is for things like spotify netflix various other streaming services uh, it's just an encryption if you cannot find this you may try this one right okay so let's save that that didn't take long at all show in folder is it going to uncompress on its own so let's copy that and place that into downloads. There we go. So I guess the file we need is gonna be in there. Navigate to settings, open file settings and find the option to enable Widevine. So settings is always down here and here. Open file settings, enable Widevine. What else have we got? Restart button, tablet, laptop switch. And remote desktop. I've never tried that in OpenFID. Right, enable Widevine. So it's asking where to find it. It's probably in this folder. 
guess it's that one. Let's hit open and restart. And then I guess if I try Spotify, uh, so this would come up with some of the apps that I've put in here or I always have. You can see Spotify is already in there. Uh, we've got COG, which is uh, a way of just checking the thermals and the CPU usage and so on. But let's just try Spotify. It's gonna automatically sign me in. I'm not a subscriber to Spotify, so log in. Yeah, it has, so let's log in. Cockcracker, that's an old email address. And let's see if it works. Now, where's my audio gonna come through? It's gonna come through the capture device, so I'm not gonna know if this works or not. So let's just play a tiny bit of whatever this is trying to play me. You're a rich girl. Okay, so you may have heard some music. I can't tell because of the way it's set up currently. Um, although I could probably have changed it to the three and a half mil output. Yeah, I could change it to three and a half mil output. Uh, where is it? Somewhere on here, I think. Settings, device, audio. So HDMI, speaker. That'll probably do it. And let's see what, oh, let's play a bit of this. Box audio. Okay, that's obviously working fine. So super easy, once you've got this on and working, it is such a friendly, easy to use operating system. Very much an operating system you'd give to someone who wasn't into computers. Um, but I really like the fact that you've got the Android integration, the fact that the web browser works so well, regular updates, the Linux options. It, it just is a really good operating system and actually works really well with touch as well. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.